Here is Bugs, a peaceable rabbit, in his forest, down his hole, stretched out before his pool. The public has been demanding my life story. Contemplating life in wise solicitude, chomping thoughtfully upon his root vegetable. Charge! And somebody, somebody, somebody always has designs upon his hide. But no matter how clever they are, they're never quite clever enough to outsmart, outfox, or outbox such a wascally wabbit. As good friend Chuck Jones might say, we are all of us Daffy, Elmer, and Wiley Coyote. We just wish we were Bugs. And Bugs, he has a whole life worth looking back at. If only for a little edification on how the vegetable patch really is greener on the other side. Everybody loves a winner, and Bugs always wins. I'm a giving you one second to draw a gun. How's that, Chunky? He's the rebel we want to be, saying what we want to say. Hit the road! Dishing out the smacks and smooches with head-spinning abandon. Heads spin. They do. They really do. Yep. The role that put Bugs Bunny on the map featured a befuddled and egg-headed hunter with an absurd cat and an unfortunate lisp. Watch up, Doc. It's a wabbit down there and I'm trying to catch him. Poor Elmer Fudd was no match for this rabbit. Young Bugs makes his entrance, but takes his time at first. Just a white-gloved hand and a long gray arm. With deft fingers and impeccable flair, this long and lean rabbit stole the show. Okay. Confidentially, I am a rabbit! The carrot was there, too, right from the start. Not to mention a signature line. Uh, what's up, Doc? Uh, what's up, Doc? His delivery was a little rough around the edges, true, but Bugs had found his shtick. Uh, what's up, Doc? <laughs> and the hare we fell in love with never struck first, but he never backed down from a fight. Bugs was nominated for an Oscar for that breakthrough appearance, and don't think the Warner Brass weren't paying attention. After that, he received the royal treatment, full color cartoons, and his name above the title. It took Cagney and Humphrey Bogart more than a couple of films to get that kind of respect. Yes, America couldn't get enough of this wise guy, Wabbit. He was a bunny unbound. But then came World War II, and no red-blooded rabbit was going to be left out of a fight like this. Bugs dug his way to the front lines, outsmarted the Axis powers, and even scared the daylights out of Hitler himself. Ah, Hitler! He sold war bonds, appeared in training films, and served as an official mascot for both the Army and Air Force. He was even promoted to Honorary Master Sergeant of the United States Marines. And how many rabbits do you know that can claim that little achievement? Sorry, fellas. I can't play with you anymore. I got some important work to do. This bunny was on the rise. He had depth. He had range. As the Looney Tunes leading man, he could handle a six-shooter or wind up a pitch. He took on gangster flicks and thrillers, monster movies, and period picks. Bugs was unstoppable. Did I mention he did his own stunts? He was screwier than screwball. A world-class charmer. I bet you say that to all the wabbits. <laughs> Everybody's every bunny. Bugs put it all on the line every time he took the stage. No one had his timing, 
no one had his moves, and no one had his wit. <laughs> Just like Gary Cooper, huh? He could out-slap the slapsticks and out-jab a Groucho Marx. I hope you won't mind waiting while I remove these wet tanks and slip into a dry martini. He'd do anything for a laugh. <laughs> but at heart, Bugs was always a song and dance man. At any given moment, he might belt out a show tune or tap out a little soft shoe. Watch him tickle the ivories, and you may hear an unexpected note or two. Uh, what's up, Doc? 